Hey everyone, it's Foyz or Dave here. Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys my best settings for OBS to record your gameplay on your PC. So I released a video recently detailing all of the settings I use in OBS to stream games, but many of you might just want to record games to your local disc for either YouTube editing or just to make montages or stuff like that. So I'm gonna break down all the settings I've got running at the moment. I think that these are by far the best settings uh, if you have uh, the right hardware to support it. So if you do enjoy this video, make sure you smash that like button, click the notification bell and subscribe for more videos coming very soon. So first thing we need to make sure we have done is we've opened up the correct version of OBS. And what I mean by that is if we press start down here and we type in OBS, you will see that you have two versions you've got OBS Studio 64-bit and OBS Studio 32-bit. Make sure you're running the 64-bit version because this is going to enable you to use all of your uh, available hardware in your system. Uh, if you run 32-bit, uh, then it's not going to have access to as much uh, RAM and other important parts of your system that you need to. Uh, you'll see here I've actually got 32-bit running, and that's just because I'm actually recording using the 64-bit version on my other monitor, just to avoid any confusion. So let's jump into the settings now. On the general tab, uh, there isn't anything here that you specifically need to change, especially for when you're recording. Uh, I like to change the theme. I run the twitchy theme because I think it looks nice, but there really isn't anything here that you need to focus on. So just ignore it. The stream tab is not used for when we're doing local recordings. So this can be completely ignored. Next, we're going to the output tab. You wanna make sure your output mode is on advanced, not simple. And this is gonna unlock a lot of different options for you to play around with uh, to actually fine tune exactly how your video looks. So make sure we're on advanced and then we're gonna ignore the streaming tab here and we're gonna to go to recording. So in recording, type should be set to standard. Recording path, set this to the place where you want your recordings to go to. Ideally, this should be a fairly fast hard drive, if not an SSD. I record to just a 72,000, sorry, 7,200 7, RPM uh, hard disk drive and that's absolutely fine for me. The reason you want a good write speed is because if the hard drive can't keep up with uh, the large file sizes that you're putting through to it, you might get some uh, stuttery video when you actually look back at it later on and that would be really annoying. So make sure you've got a good hard drive set. You want to uh, make sure that recording format is set to either MP4 or MKV. Now there's advantages to both of these. MP4 is more compatible overall with a lot of editing software. So most people would go for MP4. However, I go for MKV. The main reason for that is because first of all, I use Adobe Premiere, uh, I use the 2018 version, which supports MKV completely fine as if it's MP4. And also if OBS crashes for any reason, an MKV file will actually save itself and it won't get corrupted. Uh, an MP4 will corrupt itself if OBS crashes. And you never know what's gonna happen when you're recording a three hour session and then OBS crashes, that doesn't sound fun to me. So try MKV, see if it works for you in your editing software and such. Uh, if it does, then great. If not, then just go for MP4 and hope you don't get any crashes. Next, we've got the audio tracks. So this is how many audio tracks you want to record. Uh, I've got four selected here. Uh, most of you will likely have two or three. So what this means is you'll likely have uh, a certain source of audio on each of these. So maybe gameplay audio on one, uh, your mic on another. And then if you have some sort of way to split audio on your PC, you might have your like game chat coming through here. So like Discord or TeamSpeak or Skype or whatever you use. I have four here. I'm not gonna go in depth into why I have four, but um, you ideally just want one for your mic, one for your uh, gameplay audio, and then that should be fine. Next, encoder. So this is gonna be where we kind of split paths depending on what your system actually has in it. Uh, if your system has an NVIDIA card in here, then you'll either have the NVIDIA NVENC new or just the NVIDIA NVENC. You'll have one of those two. Ideally, you should have one of these um, for recording because the NVENC or the NVIDIA encoder is a really efficient encoder and it means that you get no FPS drops in game when you're recording, it's really, really good. If you don't have access to that, then I would try X264. It's gonna be a lot more strenuous on your PC and I'm not gonna cover a lot of the settings for it in this video. Uh, so we're gonna focus on the NVENC here. Hopefully you've got this. If you've got the AMD encoder, which is if you've got an AMD graphics card, uh, I wouldn't recommend it. I don't think it's meant to be very good um, you can try it out, maybe, I, maybe I've got the wrong info, but let's go with NVENC. 
Rescale output. This is not something we need to tick here because we're going to sort out our resolution in a different tab. Uh, custom muxer settings, leave them to uh, nothing. Next, we've got all our kind of in detail settings. So rate control, there's a couple of options here. Uh, for when we're streaming, we, if you watch my streaming video, you'll know that we put a CBR, a constant bit rate. And you can do this. Uh, and set it to a really high value because obviously when we're recording we want really good quality uh, recording so we could put cbr and put like a really high uh, bit rate but what we can actually do instead to maintain a constant quality is choose cqp which is constant quality uh, and what that means is we put a number in here and that number will basically be the quality value that we're maintaining throughout the whole video uh, it's a bit of an arbitrary number, it doesn't really mean much, at least in my eye, but basically the lower you set CQ level, the better quality you get. Around 18 gives me a really good balance in quality and file size. Uh, I don't get many better results from bringing this down any further, it just leads to really big file sizes with really high bit rates. So I'd say try 18, uh, if you're struggling with that, maybe bring it up to 20. Um, you'll lose a little bit of quality, but you'll gain a solid amount of hard drive space. So just try around this number and you'll hopefully get good results. Keyframe interval, put this to two, uh, putting this to two uh, and putting max B frames to one, which I'll cover in a second, uh, gives me the best playback quality uh, and playback uh, efficiency in Adobe Premiere. Uh, Epos Vox did a video on this, if you know who he is, um, and just found that these settings make you have less playback lag. Uh, and I don't exactly know why, but I followed them and it makes sense for me. So keyframe interval, put that to two. Preset, put this to the highest quality you can select here. It might be quality or it might be max quality, depending on what graphics card you have, but there's no reason to not have it set to the max quality that you can get. Profile, set this to high. We want this for our high definition video uh, rather than main or baseline, which are more for our standard definition revolu resolutions. Uh, look ahead, turn this off, because what this will do is try and set our max B frames for us, which we don't want. We want a constant max B frames. Psycho visual tuning, set this to on. This is literally free. Uh, free quality there's no reason to not have this on really, really good setting to have on gpu set this to zero unless you've got multiple gpus that you're using in your system which most of you aren't uh, so just set this to zero this will mean that it's selecting the first gpu i.e the only one that you have and then max b frames put this to one as i said this mixed with the keyframe second intervals uh, as set to two gives you the best performance when you're actually watching and editing the video and it doesn't affect the quality next we're going to audio so I've got a bunch of different tracks here, but the ones we need to focus on are basically two, three, and four. These are the tracks which I uh, put out to my um, uh, my recordings, and there's no reason to not have this on the max value. 320 uh, bitrate, that gives you the best quality in all your audio, and honestly, good quality audio is probably more important than good quality video, uh, especially in YouTube videos, because I hate bad quality audio. I think it, I think it's, I think it just turns my videos so much. So set your audio bitrate to 320 on all your different tracks that you're using. As I said, if you were only using two tracks, then you'd just set them both to 320 here. Uh, I've set these to 320 and then this one's at 160 because that's my stream one, which I'm not using for this video. Replay buffer is not something I use, so we don't need to look at it. Next, we go into the, another audio tab, sample rate. This is a really, really important one. You can select this as 48 or 44.1. Neither is better than the other. You can go and search online and try and find an answer to that, but neither is better than the other. The only important thing here is that all of your devices should be the same sample rate. So for example, um, I've got this set to 48. If I open up my window settings, go to sound, uh, open up sound, and we go to, for example, my mic, which is, uh, buh, buh, buh. let's go to recording. Uh, chat mic, which is my mic, go to properties, go to advanced. You'll see here, I've got it set to 48,000 hertz. You'll find that all of my audio is set to 48,000 hertz. And if you have audio uh, devices that are out of sync and don't have the same sample rate, you can it can lead to out of sync uh, recordings and audio. As you, it just causes issues. So make sure you've got all of them set to the same and then pick whatever that number is here. Go try either, you might get better results with one than the other, but 48 has always worked for me. Stereo, you want for your channels, no reason to select anything else here, you just want some audio coming out of the left and some audio coming out of the right, uh, just like when you're playing a game. 
devices. So this is gonna link back to that, uh, these audio tracks that we looked at earlier. So uh, you want to select here what those actual devices are. So for most people, you're gonna have a desktop audio device and a mic device. So you're gonna put your PC speakers here or your headphones or whatever here, and you're gonna put your mic here. And from that, you're gonna have two different audio sources, one that's gonna be your voice and one that's gonna be a mix of your game audio and your chat, so Discord or whatever. Now I have a setup by which I have my game audio and my chat split into two different tracks. And what that means is that if I wanna go into my recording uh, afterwards and there's something that happens in game and it's really, really cool, but I wanna get rid of the people talking in the background, uh, like my friends and stuff, I can just mute that bit of the audio without muting the whole PC audio, if that makes sense. Uh, and I can do an in-depth video on this, uh, you use a, uh, a software called voice meter uh, and I, as I said yeah, I can cover that in another video if you guys would like it so if you would leave a comment below and I'll cover that in another video everything else in here is pretty much not that important um, so we can go on to video this is a really really quick one base canvas resolution and output scale resolution the first one that's actually most important is output scaled resolution. This is what resolution do you want to record at, which for most people these days should be 1080p, unless you're trying to record, you know, 1440p or anything higher, you shouldn't be going below 1080p for YouTube videos. So set this to whatever you want the outputted recording to be at. Then base canvas resolution, there's a debate on this. Uh, I set it to the exact same as the scaled resolution so that it doesn't have to do any scaling. I just do some manual scaling in the background here, which I'm not gonna cover here. Uh, but most of the time I would actually recommend setting the base canvas resolution to whatever your, um, your, your, your source that you're recording is. So if you're recording a 4K game, set it to 4K. If you're recording a 1440p game, set it to 1440p. Um, it doesn't really matter too much. So I'd say just set this to your native resolution, set this to what you wanna record at. Downscale filter, there's only two options here really that I would ever choose, and that's Lanxos or Bicubic. Bicubic will give you slightly softer looking video. So if you try Lanxos and it's too sharp for you in your eyes, try Bicubic. I've always had good results with Lanxos and I like that sharp look to the video, so I choose that. And then common FPS values set to 60 because there's no reason to not record at 60 FPS unless the game you're playing is 30 FPS, in which case don't record at 60 because it's a waste. Hopefully that makes sense to everyone. Hotkeys, not that important. Advanced, uh, I would recommend the exact settings I've got here. Process priority, set this to above normal. The reason for this is so that the uh, if there's some sort of lag going on in your PC, uh, OBS doesn't lag under the pressure of it and cause your recordings to get messed up. It's better for your game to lose a bit of FPS and keep the recording nice than your game to maintain its FPS and just the uh, recording to be fucked. So uh, make sure we've got this set to above normal so that it takes priority over your game. Next, renderer. Direct 3D11 is the only one I have selected here. You shouldn't have anything else selected anyway. And then color format and V12. Color space 709 and color range partial. These two are down to your colors and how things look on your monitor. So try different combinations out. There's only four different combinations you could try between these two. So try them all out in test recordings and see what looks best to you. And I believe that is all the settings. Now, I tried not to ramble on this too, too much in this video, but it's very important that I break down these settings for you guys. And I know that you guys who have watched my OBS videos in the past like it when I go in depth into this. So once you've done all that, you need to make sure you've got a scene selected. You can go to your sources here, go to add, and you can add a game capture, click OK, and then you can click capture a specific window and you can choose what you want to record here. And then that should appear in this black screen. And then you can literally click start recording, do some test recordings, get your audio set up down here and just see what happens. The best way to learn OBS is to watch a quick tutorial and then just dive in, see how it goes for you. So hopefully this has been useful for you guys. Hopefully this means you can get in recording whatever you want to record, whether you're playing Valorant and trying to get some uh, recordings for that. I know I am at the moment and struggling a little bit. Um, whether you're playing Fortnite or Warzone, trying to get some, some wins in Warzone. You want to record all this stuff uh, and share it with your friends. This is the perfect way to do it. So hopefully this has been useful. Thanks very much for watching and I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye bye.